Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. A Ripple senior vice president has been hinting about what the future of XRP and crypto in general is going to be looking like. And I'll tell you what, it looks pretty gash darn good where I'm sitting anyway. And uh, wait till you see some of these facts. It was a really interesting Twitter thread, and he included a number of charts as well with, with uh, some of the tweets anyway. And so I want to share with you what he said, some of my thoughts on it, and some tag-along stories that uh, all but prove his point, right? So b before we go any further, if you would please ever so delicately tap that like button, but don't get all smashy-smashy with it. Just a delicate, frilly little tap will do. And also, go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel. Don't cost nothing. Take my free content, damn it. All right, shout out to XRP Crypto Wolf for sending this thread my way. I do appreciate it. And really, a lot of people do. I just, it would be too much to literally list everybody. So typically what I do, even if I find the story on my own, the first person that I see that, that tags me in a story, I just, I, I want to give somebody credit because I, I really do appreciate you guys taking the time to share information that you find interesting and worth sharing, even though I can't literally um, put all of that on the channel here. Uh, don't think that if I don't respond or cover it, it, do, it doesn't mean I don't appreciate it. Uh, you know, you're, you're still a cool person in my book. I'm just, I just want to share that. But uh, here it is. So this is a Sheesh Burla. He's one of the um, one of the original Ripple employees. He's been around for the strong majority of the existence of Ripple, and he is senior vice president of I think Pro product and corporate development. One day I'm gonna remember that senior vice president of product and corporate development. And so here's what he had to say. It's been a wild few weeks in crypto. OCC has green lighted banks to get involved. Bitcoin hits $12,000, DeFi is booming, futures products are soaring, and adjusted taxation, uh, transaction value rather, uh, for stable coins hit an all-time high. And this is just a fraction of the news. And by the way, I do have uh, a couple, like I said, fun tag-along stories. One of them is about DeFi. It's absurd. It's, I mean, just wait till you see this. But uh, he continues here, Ashish Burla. What's one common denominator here? Likely global uncertainty with fiat currencies, and many in the crypto industry focusing on utility beyond just speculation. Examples like Dogecoin aside, there's a new growing focus on an asset's use case, its tangibility. Yeah, well, we've, we've known that for, well, I'll tell you what, I've known for almost the entirety of the time I've been in crypto. I figured out it out probably inside of a, a I don't know if it was a, a week or two or three, whatever it was. I have to go back and think about it, I suppose. But uh, yeah, probably about a week. I bought I bought XRP for the first time after I'd been in the world of crypto for one week and did some research. And uh, yeah, so it, that was what it was. I was like, so wait a minute, this thing, this thing does something? There's a cryptocurrency that does something, whereas the rest of them just, there was no obvious need for a coin to be attached to the blockchain. And so for me, it, it, it never made sense that you'd have these blockchains that don't functionally do anything, or even if the blockchain is useful, don't need the coin that's attached to it. That's always been a head scratcher, right? And so I just thought, okay, I'm only going to put my money in the, you know cryptocurrencies that offer utility here. Well, what he's citing here is an increased appreciation in general for utility in cryptocurrencies. And I do think it's funny that he's, uh, he cited Dogecoin. Uh, he wrote Dogecoin. I'm assuming that's a typo, right? But uh, check this out. Look, look where things are going. And I, I've actually cited this on the channel, too. We're seeing a melding of the old world and new. It's only a matter of time before banks offer custody services, acquire companies with those capabilities, and potentially even offer crypto lending as they see consumer interest in DeFi. Exactly. So if there's a, a company that's offering a, a, a crypto custody, and now banks have the green light to do that. In case you missed the story, it was kind of a big one. Of this, the, the United States federal government has given the green light. Banks can, t can custody cryptocurrency uh, for customers. Well, maybe they don't have any, any, pick your bank, maybe they don't really have any reasonable experience in crypto or blockchain. And so he's making a point here that you should expect to see some acquisitions, which will be a quick way, quicker way to onboard those types of services for their customers here. Um, and you can see here's the chart. So look at DeFi, and I've got a tag along story about this one. Oh my! So you can see, and this sounds about right. This is when I really started to take note. He's got a chart here showing total value locked in terms of United States dollars in DeFi. This is a this is a one year chart, 
and look at somewhere you know towards the tail end of June here it just started spiking and, and in July is certainly maybe I, I maybe I started to see it in late June but I definitely in early July saw this and I was talking about it on the channel I was like oh my gosh because the amount of money flowing into DeFi is just crazy and here's the first chart that I've uh, seen that shows the total like recent chart uh, the, the the total uh, United States dollar value of this and it's astronomical you can see down here if you look at September of last year uh, what would this be half a billion and uh, at the end of this chart and it's a one-year chart it's over six billion this is a major trend that's unfolding here interesting I'm telling you DeFi is not going going away it's it's it's, it's certainly not going to, as far as what entities are going to have long-term success we shall see but uh, Shish Burl is certainly nailing it here then he wrote, centralized crypto exchanges, Coinbase, Binance, etc., provided both fiat on and off ramps, plus most crypto liquidity over the last few years. Now, decentralized exchanges, or DEXs for short, D-E-X, DEX, uh, with no central operator, are gaining momentum. Fiat on and off ramps are provided by stable coins. Yeah, and so as, as far as the, the on and off ramps, you know, Yes, I, I think that that's it's fair enough to state that. Now, obviously, um, you know, like tether or pick your stable coin. It, it's although backed by the dollar, not the same thing as the dollar, obviously. And so it's not like to this point people have been putting stable coins into their checking accounts. You know, that you can convert it, obviously. But uh, it, yeah, as far as the on and off ramps, that's that's where pretty much all of this has been happening. But it's also been on the rise for some time that decentralized exchanges, although they've offered clunky experiences uh, over over the years, uh, it should be a thing. Like humans will probably figure this out. And Binance even has it was one of the most major exchanges that was talking about this years ago. So they're they're a centralized entity, and you can always think when it comes to blockchain. Do you need like? It, it, are you going to be disrupted by blockchain? And if you're a middleman, uh, ask yourself that question and find out if it makes sense for you. That, like, would you logically be disrupted as a result of blockchain? Now, for some, the, the answer will be no, but for others, the answer is yes. And Binance realized, hey, we could actually be disrupted here. How about that? And so they've been working on their decentralized exchange. Um, and there are others. There's all sorts of others. It's just one of the more notable ones because everyone in the world of crypto to this point has probably heard of Binance, right? Ashish continues, though. Stable coins, especially dollar-backed, are another fascinating use case. Their success to date is largely due to a unique go-to-market strategy enabling global consumers to access the United States dollar without a bank account via Tether. Blockchain isn't just a, a technology with potential. It's actually being used. Now, check this out. For Ripple, our on-demand liquidity, or ODL for short, the product, using XRP as a bridge currency accounts for nearly a fifth of all transactions on RippleNet. Look at this. Here, it's showing the, the, the quarter, uh, the, the earliest quarters, Q3 2019. Look, look at this. So you could say under 5% in Q3 of just last year. And I know he said one-fifth, and I'm a little... Uh, confuzzled by that, if I could uh, use a word that doesn't exist, because according to this chart, it's actually more like a little over 25%, or a little over one-fourth of transactions on RippleNet. Uh, not one-fifth, so even more than what's cited according to this particular chart here, but it does just keep going up and up, and this represents utility. And as a holder of XRP, I believe that, especially institutional investors, as they enter the world of crypto, like, what's going to actually matter? A coin attached to a blockchain where the coin doesn't do anything, or a coin attached to a blockchain that's actually getting used because developers build on top of the ledger and have created real-world use cases that offer true value. What do you think might have staying power? Well, I'm not offering financial advice, certainly not. I don't have a financial background. But to me, the concept of utility mattering is obvious. And so I'm happy to hold and continue to purchase XRP. But again, so according to this chart, one-fourth one-fourth of all RippleNet transactions. And that's with just a handful of corridors open. Where do you guys think this is all going to go? Corridors are continuing to be built. It's not going to stop. Ripple can't stop, won't stop. Playa. And then he wrote, all in all, an interesting time to be in crypto. When is it not, though, he writes. It feels like the potential we saw early on to leverage blockchain and rethink how, uh, to how to move value without a central counterparty is on the precipice of something extraordinary. Couldn't agree more, my friend. 
it's on the precipice of something extraordinary. And, and I'll show you this chart too. This is another one that he posted here. Uh, total K uh, stable coin supply. Are you noticing a trend here? I showed you the DeFi chart. When did DeFi start blowing up in terms of United States dollar value? Around here. Stable coin supply. What's going on here? I think, and it's actually provably true on the XRP Ledger and other ones, it's just the XRP Ledger is the one that I've been focusing on because this is an XRP-centric channel because that's what I'm interested in. Uh, just endless quantities of new people coming on board clearly, which is easy to illustrate. Now, I have shared this on my channel because uh, the XRP Ledger is public. You can see new account activation. So I've known it's been on the rise, but I think it's for other cryptocurrencies as well in terms of actual adoption cryptocurrencies being purchased here. And so what's interesting here is you're seeing massive volume increases and frequently this will uh, this will precede a parabolic movement to, to you know whether it's bull or bear movement that's that's what it precedes and given how many p new people are entering here it's just rather fascinating uh, a really fascinating time to be in the world of crypto at this particular moment um now let me jump over to uh, oh I'll highlight this too uh, there's a tweet by fellow XRP YouTuber uh, Kevin Cage, and he wrote, in 2018, Bitcoin transaction fees were maxing out around $37. Sure, it sure sounds like Bitcoin will be the solution that will scale appropriately for the future of payments. Hashtag satire. So he's kidding around. And I actually saw fees um, in excess of $50. Uh, kind of nuts, right? So Bitcoin's not scaling so well, and that's another illustration of why I think utility is important. Uh, Chris, who is at Chris XRP Future, tagged me. He wrote the following. Utility wins the day at Moonlambo IO, that would be my account. It's so perfect that XRP sits where it does while certain coins, in quotation marks, do what they do. I love it, and if the world made sense, we wouldn't get to have this banter. Yeah, exactly, I'm not, I'm not complaining about the banter. I love interacting with everybody in the community. I have a blast doing this. Um, now take a look at this. Take a look at this from Coindesk. Capital One files patent for AI that would slice dice social media to find crypto trading picks well how about this and i just googled capital one like you know if you're in the united states you know what capital one is i don't know how big they are outside of the united states but they're absolutely massive i just googled them to pull up some quick facts and you can see here that according to numbers from last year they have almost fifty thousand employees capital one financial corporation is an american bank holding company specializing in credit cards auto loans banking and savings accounts you, you get the idea, right? They're freaking massive. Everyone has heard of Capital One, at least around where I, where I live anyway. And so what are they doing? A, a reputable company that's massive, what are they doing? Look at this. They're jumping into crypto, right? Capital One has moved to patent an artificial intelligence platform capable of turning the Internet's 24-7 cryptocurrency informational overload into actionable trading recommend, uh, recommendations. So I would say that Ashish Burl is kind of hitting the nail on the head. It's, a, it's just adoption. Pure adoption continuing to occur. It's not going to slow down. It's just going to increase. And I think it will increase at an exponential rate as time passes here. That's how it's been in the past. And I suspect it will be in the future. Um, now, take a look at this. From newsbtc.com, YFI breaks above $11,000, but on-chain metrics spell trouble. What is YFI? I've been laughing about this for some time and shared it on my channel at least twice. It's Yearn Financial, previously known as I Earn Finance. They're still in the spotlight of the cryptocurrency market following the launch of its governance token YFI in late July. This altcoin has done nothing but shot up. And it's absurd. It's even more ridiculous than the last time I reported on it. Last time I reported, it was up 18,000%. It's DeFi. That's why, <laughs> look, I'm telling you, Ashish Berla knows what he's talking about here. He is observing this, and I'm a, I've been observing this as well. It's true. And so it's now up this coin. Last time I reported, it was up 18,000. It's now up 34,363.7%. What the hell? More, what makes this... <laughs> hysterical to me is that the inventor of this particular coin said it is valueless it's a valueless governance token uh, you don't need it and he said please don't buy it it does not have value and what are humans doing freaking crazy man that's that's outrageous like those are the types of returns you'd see with icos with most of which ultimately faltered and went to zero but how about that so anyway long story short happy to hold xrp very optimistic for the future this is an exciting time to be in crypto and i look forward to seeing what happens in the rest of 2020 
But that's it for this video. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Nambo!